Brain donation sounds like something performed in fictional laboratories on a big screen. But not only is it very real, it is one of the few ways that after death one can help to save the lives of future generations. Joining me today is Dr. John Trojanowski, Professor of Pathology and Laboratory Medicine at the University of Pennsylvania. Welcome. Suzanne, it's a pleasure to have you here today. Thank you. Here at the Center for Neurogenerative Disease, you specialize in researching Alzheimer's and Parkinson's which can only be definitively diagnosed through a brain autopsy, apparently. Because of the complexity of the brain and because of its inaccessibility, we can't do as many informative diagnostic techniques or procedures during life. Parkinson's yeah. disease and amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or Lou Gehrig's disease, right. frontotemporal dementia, we look at a number of diseases yeah that are not always easy to distinguish clinically while the patient is alive. So it's very important, again, for 100% certainty to, to do the autopsy. You're going to show me some differences that can be observed with the naked eye uh, between a diseased brain and a healthy one? Most of the important information comes from microscopic examination, but you can see this is the gray matter. It doesn't look gray necessarily, but this is the cortical ribbon of an Alzheimer brain and this is the cortical ribbon of a normal brain. The major differences you see between these two is a larger ventricle in the yeah. Alzheimer brain, much smaller normal size here, and this is the hippocampus. This is the part of the brain most affected early on in Alzheimer's disease and it's very shrunken compared to the normal hippocampus of this normal individual. So Suzanne, we looked at a, the brain of uh, an Alzheimer patient and a normal individual and I showed you what you could see with the naked eye. Oh, my heavens. What you couldn't see with the naked eye was all of these tangles right. that are hallmarks of Alzheimer's disease. And a normal person would Looks have... Like rain. It does. Brown rain. That's a very good description of what we're looking at. Have uh, any uh, cures been found through brain autopsy? 2005 is the 50th anniversary of the implementation of polio vaccine. It was because of examining the brains of deceased individuals who died of this viral infection that it was possible to know the cause of polio and develop a vaccine. How close do you think we are to um, a cure for Alzheimer's or other brain disorders? When we talk about a cure, our objective is uh, for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's is to delay the onset of a disease of older people by five or ten years, meaning that people would die, of course, from another cause, but enjoying their retirement, enjoying their family, living at home, and having their personality, their memory uh, with them, and rather than having it destroyed by Alzheimer's. I imagine that approaching a terminally ill patient or their family with the suggestion of donating their brain may be very difficult. How do you go about finding these donors? Many families that we deal with are very aware of uh, the status of therapy for Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and research and they know that all of the major advances in the last 20 or 30 years that have brought us closer to therapies have come from studying post-mortem brains. Families, after making a donation, feel that they've done something to benefit others, and that is a silver lining, they tell me. Well, I want to thank you, Dr. Trojanowski, for allowing us to uh, come into your lab and uh, share your fascinating work. Thank you very much for coming. And thank you for watching. I'm Suzanne Roberts. We'd love to hear from you. I may even end up reading your comments and questions on the air. So write us at the address you see on your screen.